didn't even know how to pronounce her name. But now, Nadia's name is known throughout the entire world for her perfection in sport, and more recently, for her dramatic and controversial escape from her homeland, Romania. Now, for a compelling... And there was a time when Mary Lou only dreamed of becoming the next Olga, or Nadia. But her brilliance at the 1984 Olympics vaulted her into the dreams of every young gymnast. These faces may be unfamiliar to you now, but could one of these American gymnasts become an Olympic star? Today, live, it's the U.S. versus East Germany in women's gymnastics. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat. In our 30th year, this is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Welcome to the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee, where the competition is underway between the United States and East Germany in women's gymnastics. We have moved through two rotations. Let's take a look at the team standings. The United States very strong, leading East Germany 97.30, East Germany 94.125. The all-around standings after the second rotation. Again, the story has been that of a Wendy Bruce, the veteran member of the team, as she has taken the first two rotations. The vault and the bars. Wendy Bruce looking very solid today. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford. Delighted you're with us on this, the 29th anniversary weekend of Wide World of Sports. And working with me today, a pair of champions in their own rights, Kathy Rigby McCoy and Bart Connor. And Kathy, without the two big names in uh, U.S. women's gymnastics, we're doing rather well. Doing extremely well, despite the fact that the most renowned gymnasts are not here, including Brandy Johnson and Bella Caroli's top athlete. There's some very good Americans present. This meet will give whoever wins the opportunity to gain some very positive national and international exposure in light of the fact that there are some important meets coming up in the next couple of years. This is the time to build a solid reputation as an individual competitor as well as a team. And a bit of uh, gymnastic history being made here, Bart. Uh, the first time there's ever been a dual meet in this country between the United States and East Germany. It could be the last because with unification between the two Germanys, all the changes in Eastern Europe, uh, this may be the last time we'll look at an East Germany as we see it today. Well, and as you know, Frank, the East German women's team has been one of the strongest in world and Olympic competition for the last 20 years, consistently winning medals. But it's a very critical and important rebuilding phase right now. It's a very young team. Only Bearbell Vilgos is a holdover from the recent World Championships. And with the cutbacks in coaching staffs and funding for sports programs in East Germany, it'll be very interesting to see if they can maintain that world-class program. Picking up the competition now in the third rotation, the beam, and this is uh, a 14-year-old East German, Anke Schoenfelder, as she mounts the bar. And the East Germans have been somewhat shaky so far. Uh, Anke fell on the uneven bar, so she's going to have to compose herself, and this is the toughest event to do that on. So precarious. Gymnasts want to make sure they don't work too cautiously. They have to be aggressive on this apparatus. Here's her gymnastic series, which is dance movements, two in a row. Anka, at the age of 14, has seen so much change. Her home, Berlin. Now, this is called the acrobatic series, when you see two or more movements of tumbling in a row. Kathy, she had a lot of trouble on that series in the warm-ups, but she nailed it here. Well, she put her game face on, as we've seen many times with the East German athletes. Concentration, obviously, so, so important. Tough break there. She held on to it. If she would have fallen, it would have been a five-tenths of point deduction. Possibly only two to three-tenths there. The East German form technique in finesse is, is very good. They just don't seem to have the same skills. Oh, big break there. Five-tenths. They've just been missing quite a bit today. Anka, as Kathy mentioned, fell earlier in her favorite event, the bars, so she will be penalized five tenths with that fall. Anka Schoenfelda, and will be returning to Memphis, Tennessee. The United States coming up when we return. In one stroke. Back in Memphis, a city that would like to have the Olympic trials in 1992, and the score for Anna Schoenfelder, 8.70. And we will look first 
at Shelley Stack, a former member of the United States Olympic team in 88 and a member of the World Championship team of last fall. And unfortunately had a, a little break, on, well, a big break on the uneven bars. Once again, we'll have to get her concentration together. She begins with a press mount, and watch this. She'll go right into what is called a planche. It's so impressive. Great balance. Obviously, one of the requirements to show balance here. She also has a move uh, in her routine coming up, a front flip. Very, very difficult. A blind move. You cannot see where you're landing, and she just nails it. Her acrobatic series coming up again. Two back handsprings to a layout. You can see that her time in the sport has really paid off here. Little wobbly there. I guess if you were to criticize one thing with Shelly, she really needs to work a little bit higher on her toes, have a little better form in her extension and her alignment. We have to show level changes on the balance beam, and this is, of course, one of them. Remember that balance beam is only four inches wide, four feet off the ground. The gymnasts have 70 seconds to 90 seconds to complete their routine. How wide is the beam? The, the beam, uh, as I said, is four inches wide. And in competition, it feels like it's about two inches. <laughs> Round off double back. Pretty good routine, then. So Shelly Stack, who will tell you that she kind of lost her motivation after the 88 Olympics. Is coming back from a toe injury following the championships last fall and seemingly has it together once again. The 16 year old from Houston, Texas, Shelly Stack. Do you think they were kind of low on Liz? A lot of fans here. Shelly mentioned that she just has a lot more fun in the gym. She's been able to nice. keep it in perspective and enjoy it a lot more. Let's take a look from the overhead camera. You get a, a different view of the beam. Shelly does a very nice acrobatic series here. There's a back handspring, back handspring, layout, and this is a perfect angle to give you an idea of how precarious that balance beam actually is. The margin for error, as we've mentioned so many times, is so slim. Four inches. Shelly Sack awaiting her score. Obviously pleased with what she has just accomplished. Shelly's so great because she's always clowning around. She's uh, has a terrific energy and a terrific spirit, and it's amazing when she can focus all that in and, uh, and put together a terrific balance beam as she did. And it's always so, such a dramatic relief to get that balance beam routine over with and ha have been successful with it. A former Bella Caroli student prior to the Olympics and joined Don Peters Club in Huntington Beach, California. You know, Shelly left uh, Bella because uh, she said after the Olympics she went back and she was training just with the same intensity as she did before the Olympics, and she said, I couldn't do it anymore. I needed a more relaxed atmosphere, and uh, she's been able to do very well with Don Peters out in Southern California. And now at the age of 16, she wants to be the team leader. And, uh, 9 6 two, five for Shelly Stack. So the Whitby team leader performs well. The German Democratic Republic. Sabina Ota of East Germany. And these Germans also not bringing their championship team of last fall here. Just one member of that team is represented. So they too are in a bit of not only political change, international change, but also in team gymnastics. And this is probably one of the most impressive mounts a, a gymnast can do on the balance beam. You're, you're running on a beat board that's very wide onto a four-inch apparatus and completing a front flip, and she just hit it so well. It's really remarkable, too, the, when you look at her face, she's an exact duplicate of Aurelia Dobre from Romania, of course, the world champion of a couple of years ago. And I'm sure she would like to have her success. There's a, a wonderful jump full turn. It's those moves that look so easy that are, the, as we said, the most uh, difficult to land sometimes and keep straight. There's her acrobatic series. Oh, big break. Five tenths of a point there, deduction. She had a lot of trouble with that in practice. Made it very few times in rehearsing it. Being down so far after two rotations, Kathy, uh, would it be putting a little bit more pressure? Are they trying to do a little more than maybe they can do? Uh, well, it, it's going to be tough to make up that many points. Um, I, I think what you try to get out of is that kind of negative feeling that you have at that point of, of a loss. 
uh, and you and you really have to forget about the first two events and just concentrate on your routine. But yes, there is added pressure. You you don't want to fall again. You tr try to remain tough. Now preparing for her dismount. Double back. A little hot there on the end. Sabina Atta, her hometown, Merseburg, Germany. This is the front on mount. This is very difficult to do to get enough height and rotation. And she made it easily and moves through it very nicely. Now she got in trouble on the acro series here. There's a back handspring to another back handspring. Let's see if we can see where she was off. She takes off. Looks like she's pretty square when she pikes down. I'm not really she, sure. Well, she Andy. whips it over a little bit to the left-hand side. And you're talking about a, maybe a quarter of an inch. And, of course, this is the round-off tuck double back. And this is one of the best parts of the exercise. Decent lift, good position in the air, and a solid landing. Sabina Atta, and we'll be back with her score and a look at a young rising star, a 13-year-old American, Shannon Miller, when we return to Memphis. Nine. One five and Shannon Miller gets a round of applause. She's 13 years old. She's 4-3. She's beefed up to a hefty 60 pounds from the program weight of 55, and she has totally captivated the gymnast enthusiast here in Memphis this past week. And here's an athlete with an incredible skill level for her age. And from this point on, what what the only thing she'll probably need to work on is maturity and finesse, and of course consistency. But she is a real uh, exciting new newcomer in the international scene. Lots of potential here. We've talked about the fact that she needs more polish, but she's looking better and better. Just since six months ago, she didn't look quite this good in terms of poise and form and technique. Exactly, and you can hear her coach in the background mumbling, stay on, keep tight. Those are the things that she's thinking as she goes through this routine. And now, of course, it's Steve Nuno, who has nurtured this young gymnast. Watch this series. Oop. Back handspring, two layouts. She missed that in the qualifying round yesterday. She had to qualify for this meet, and she held on to it there. Very lovely routine so far. Steve Nuno was very upset with her because she never misses those moves. And when you think about it, we mentioned the fact that the beam is only four inches wide. She's about three and a half inches <laughs> wide, so for her, it's exactly. about like tumbling on a sidewalk. One of the things that fascinated me yesterday was watching all the other young gymnasts. They stopped doing what they were doing during the qualification competition yesterday. Here comes the pull her. in. Oh, big break. Ever so close, but she missed. And your heart is in your throat at that point, and what a wonderful routine. But then again, she's 13 years old. She has some time. She shouldn't take it so hard. Kathy, you've seen many of them. How good can she really be? Well, it, that depends on a lot of things. She certainly has the potential. She has the skill level. Um, it, it comes down now to, to how tough a competitor will she be uh, Shannon, when the pressure is on. Shannon was the first American ever to do this dismount, full twisting, double back. And you can see she overdoes it. She makes it easily, pulls it around a little too far. Of course, that's a major deduction. But she does have a terrific future ahead of her. And when your adrenaline level is so high, uh, those things happen. Shannon Miller awaiting her score. And, of course, in the first two rotations, the story was another U.S. gymnast, Wendy Bruce, the veteran gymnast, here in the vault. 8.875. 9.875. 9.875. certainly has tremendous power. Notice the nice, tight, clean form in the air. That's a laid out Yurchenko with a full. And she does a nice job in fighting that landing. Then the uneven bars again. 9.80. Right here is her release move. That's called a Jaeger, a straddled front flip invented by an East German. She does a transition to the low bar here. Hip cast pirouette. Back to the high bar, and this is the dismount sequence. She's going to cast up to a handstand. There's a giant with a full turn and a little bit of a form break there, but probably one to two tenths of a point deduction, but a nice high, clean, tuck double back dismount. And the leader after the first two rotations, Wendy Bruce. Meanwhile, Shannon Miller's score on the beam, 9.20. 
charming young U.S. gymnast. And we'll be returning to the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee for more gymnastics competition in just a moment. Gymnastics, and we'll have the final rotation, the floor exercise coming up in a moment. But first, this message and then a word from our ABC station. Stay with us. ABC's Wide World of Sports continues live from Memphis. Now your host, Frank Gifford. The Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee, the United States versus East Germany in women's gymnastics. The first ever dual competition. The United States showing very well. A lot of promise for the future as youngsters are performing well here this evening. The team standings after the first, the third rotation. The United States with a very significant lead, 144-675. East Germany, 139-775. And it has been the Wendy Bruce afternoon. The veteran U.S. gymnast showing very well as Wendy Bruce took the beam and she took the uneven bars and she is coming up right now for exercise and she is truly back I would say Kathy and she this struggled a little bit after the world championships but she has put her game face on here this is probably the most exciting event to watch Wendy in she's dynamic in fact she's starting out with a brand new mount it's going to be a double layout right now she's waiting for the judges to give her the signal to go ahead representing the United States of America Wendy Bruce and there it is. This first tumbling run is very risky. As we said, it's brand new for her. But if anybody has the power to do what she does. Very nice. Pulled it right around. That's tough to do. Two rotations in a straight body position. Obviously feeling confident from her previous performance in the first three rotations. This is an event where you can really let go and let your personality shine. Yeah. So easily performed. Ever since watching Boganskaya at the World Championships, a great Soviet gymnast. Uh, brand new trends are starting in the floor exercise and Wendy's following suit here. A little more daring. For this last tumbling run, here's where the endurance really counts. To really pull this double back. What a great competition for Wendy Bruce. Oh, she's failing it, isn't she? There's no a great competition. <laughs> There, of course, is Kevin Brown, her coach, who's also the coach of Brandy Johnson. Boy, she really nailed that dismount. Yesterday, in the qualifying round, she only used a double-twisting layout backflip, but today, she had to do the tuck double back. The high level of difficulty, good form, and boy, can't do it much better than that. I mentioned she's all the way back. She entered the shoulder right after the World Championships a year ago, and she has come back from that. And she awaits the score now. She needs better than a 9.45 to move in front of Elizabeth Crandall in first place in the all-around. And we'll be back with the score and, of course, more for exercise here in Memphis, Tennessee. Wendy Bruce, we told you she needed a 9.45 to move in front. She has a 9.80 in the floor exercise, and she has clinched the all-around competition here this afternoon. As we mentioned, today's competition marks the first time the U.S. has met East Germany in a dual women's gymnastics meet. And with the unification of East and West Germany seemingly inevitable, it may very well be the last time they'll meet. The recent democratic reforms have left the once powerful East German sports machine in a total state of earned certainty. And for more on this story, let's join Donna DeVerona. Donna? Historically, the East Germans have used sports as a vehicle to legitimize a political system forced to wall its people in. 
Their athletic success has been remarkable. In the Olympic Games since 1968, East Germany has won more medals than every country except the United States and the Soviet Union, nations 15 times as large. With the fall of the Berlin Wall, the role of the elite athlete in East German society has come under question, and they're caught in the middle. They now compete for a country that soon may cease to exist, and the sports officials desperate for hard currency to keep the system going are willing to sell their secrets of success. The hope is that money will come from the Western concept of marketing. Sponsors' names have begun appearing on jerseys, and recently, secret training facilities have been opened, like this underground bunker in Keenbaum. Altitudes of up to 5,000 feet can be simulated in this low-pressure chamber. East German athletes have used this facility before every Olympics since 1972. But income earned by allowing the world's top teams to use this facility still may not be enough to keep East Germany's top athletes home. All the problems arising now depend on the main question mark, money. We cannot stop a handball player, uh, a girl in the national team, when she goes to West Germany and receives $2,000 a month and a brand new car immediately. So how shall you stop that girl? She can cross over the border like from Nevada to Texas. East Germany's most valuable athletic resource, the sports school system, is also in jeopardy. Here, hand-picked future stars are measured, tested and analyzed. And with German unification on the horizon, future success may depend on keeping this system intact. The possibility that it may be destroyed has left athletes confused. Also man könnte vielleicht noch dazu sagen, there's uncertainty here, not only among top athletes, but among children, because no one knows what will happen in the future. Certain sports schools have had to dissolve themselves because of lack of support. There are very good aspects of GDR sports that the government must encourage and must be preserved. Recent elections have mandated that the government seek unification as quickly as possible. Once the process is complete, the International Olympic Committee and World Sports Federations will be presented with one German sports team. As soon as we are one country, we will bring one team to the Olympics and one team to the World Championships. Some have said that we need time to prepare a single team, but I don't consider it necessary to know a year in advance how you make up your team. Things will certainly never be the same in East German sports, and for that, the country as a whole should benefit. Even now, the young student athletes in the sports schools are freer to pick the careers of their choice. A relief for prodigies like 16-year-old Martin Bertzloff, the national junior high jump champion. A year ago, I was told that because I was a sportsman, my only option in the field of medicine was to be a physical therapist. Now, I've told them, I'm going to be a veterinarian. At a judges conference at the moment, Kim Kelly of the United States will be coming up very shortly, but as we come out of the peace on East Germany, I think what we have seen this afternoon might indicate that this is a team, a troubled team, perhaps, with the coaches, with all the federation, kind of wondering what's going to happen to us. We know we're going to into a unification period, and uh, what can you see down the line for them? Frank, I spoke to Klaus Heller, the security general of the East German Gymnastics Federation. He said over the next year, they're going to cut back from 300 paid coaches on their national staff to less than 100. And so he's expecting that a lot of coaches will be leaving East Germany, going to other countries, hoping to sell their services and their knowledge to uh, other countries that are willing to pay. Of course, the European Championships are coming up uh, next week. As a matter of fact, it'll be interesting to see how the East Germans uh, stand up, of course, to the other European teams. Uh, again, we will remind you, there is a conference going on on the floor at the moment. You know, Frank, you can see that they are just, they look tremendously distracted, even with, it's not that their bodies aren't in shape, uh, they're, they're lacking some strength and, and skill movements, but there's just a, a real distraction. I've never seen them as down as they are in, in this competition. Well, Kathy, both you and Bart have traveled extensively uh, throughout Europe, but what would a unified German team be? Would it be a much better team? Uh, well, specifically in the sport of gymnastics, uh, talking to Klaus Heller, he said that if the East and West Germanys did unify, that most of the team, of course, would be East German with respect to both the men and the women. So uh, it would be more difficult for the West Germans to find a spot on that team. Mary Lou Retton looking on. She'll be giving a clinic a little later on this afternoon. Meanwhile, Kim Kelly, 16-year-old. 
out of King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, on the floor. And this hasn't been Kim's best competition, but she's made vast improvements from last year. Looks very strong and comfortable. This is a good event for her. Lots of style. choreography for her because she can have a little fun with it, play to the audience, and it really suits her style, Kathy. Well, it, it truly does, and style is as important as those tumbling movements that you see. You can only get, you know, a, a high score if you can really, really sell that routine and, and be able to pull it off with the dance training. How difficult is it to pull it back together again? You mentioned she had a tough time this afternoon. Eighth in the beam, eighth in the bars. How difficult now to get it back together? Well, this is where international and national experience pay off, and Kelly's pretty good at that. Uh, and this is also an event where you really can let go. It's not quite so difficult to hit your routine as it is, for example, on the uneven bars or balance beam. Let's see if she's going to use that tuck double at the end. Yes. A little low there. Only a tenth or two. I think the American team is just feeling so high at this point. Uh, they were, as we mentioned, beat at the Olympics. They came back at the World Championships to beat the East Germans, but they, uh, uh, today they have just been shining. Let's take a look at this tumbling run now. You can see she has tremendous speed. She's going to do a round off. This is a back handspring. Decent lift. That's a tuck double back. That's the last tumbling run. She's a little short, but she does a really good job at pulling that around and not giving away a major deduction. Well, we mentioned that Wendy Bruce has already clinched the all-around competition. And good score for Kim Kelly. 9.80. Bouncing back from poor performances in the bars and the beam. Now, Elizabeth Crandall of the United States is in second place overall in Earlier, let's take a look at her floor exercise. Good performance. Once again, she works with Stormy Eaton and has a very positive attitude in the gym, and it translates here on the floor exercise. She began with a full in double back, toughest move in the floor exercise. Okay, let's go. Leg tight. Up. You can hear her coach in the background. Obviously, she can't hear that and neither can the judges, otherwise there would have been a deduction, but... Elizabeth suffered a broken leg in 1989, but go. she really made her comeback Work last month pass. Work in up. Moscow. Up, go. Up, clean. Her coach, Stormy Eaton, said she's just like a Mustang. She's aggressive and yet unpredictable. You never know what she's going to do in competition. I think he alluded to that, too, in the, in the gym at home. a very beautiful acro gymnastic combination. We're watching Elizabeth Crandall, her floor exercise from a short while ago. Currently in second place. Fast, baby, let's go. Pull on it, pull on it, pull on it. And what he's telling her to do, or what he was telling her to do, was really pull that double back around when you are so tired at the end of the routine. Is she hearing yeah. that? Well, I think she's hearing it in her mind. I don't think she actually hears him, but she's heard him in the gym so many times you hit it. that uh, you, 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 you think about it as you're going around. And Elizabeth Friend with that floor exercise a short while ago, 9.775. She's in second place in the all-around. Back with more of the United States gymnasts in a moment. In the world championships last fall. And given the fact that Sandy came into this competition with somewhat of a handicap, she hasn't been able to work out uh, in 12 days because she bruised uh, uh, her sternum doing a dismount off the balance beam. She has done a very good job. Sandy needs a 9.675 to move into third place. Now she cannot let's catch go. Wendy Bruce. Come on. Or let's go. She cannot also on, catch Elizabeth Crandall. But Ready? she can move into third place. Woo. All right. And the one move at the end of her routine that she was a little concerned about, she really nailed. And a brand new routine and a good exercise, a little break, up, break on the second tumbling run. Big double. 
Hey, Coach Stormy Eaton, he is wearing a microphone. You'll hear this exchange. Good job, good job. You weren't ready for that floor, huh? <laughs> hey, oh, well. I'm, I'm just happy you got through this Again. meet because it, it's Sandy you, know, you did really good. Not third working out, you did really good. Six, seven, five. Really good. <clears throat> Mm. Thank you. Same to you on Kim. Just a great all-around day for <laughs> no, but I'm really the U.S. Women's the Gymnastics team. Or is it then just such an off day for the East Germans? Well, a little bit of both. I think that the U.S. team has really risen to the occasion. And they, they look tough in practice. And, and for the most part, they have performed exceptionally well here. Uh, obviously, there are things to work on uh, before the World Championships and Olympics. But a good, solid depth on this team. Sandy's so calm and relaxed. Her coach, Stormy Eaton, was telling us at the World Championships, in the bus from the hotel to the competition arena, she fell asleep. <laughs> well, she'll tell you, she's just here because it's fun. Talked to her the other night. She says, I wouldn't do it if it wasn't fun. <laughs> and she seems to be having fun, just whether she's working out or in the qualification competition or as of now. One of the things she did mention, however, is, is that she did need a date for the prom, Bart. <laughs> Uh, I guess I better get down to Arizona. <laughs> Give her a call. United States of America, Sandy Woolsey. Just lied to you again. Verbal <laughs> Bielgos of the German Democratic Bielgos, the only member of the uh, East German World Championship team from last fall, represented here today. Verbal Bielgos. She's a very strong gymnast. This is a good event for her. She'll begin with a triple twist. deduction, I think, for the judges to take off. One of the things that I've noticed about the East German team in this competition, however, is their dance has really improved. Their finishing lines. Neil Goss was tied for sixth coming in to this fourth rotation. They have three tumbling runs. Very nice. Once again, not quite the skill level of the United States team, but performed clean, good technique on what they do. Double twist. Verbal Avilgas. Perhaps the, certainly the most noted of the East German women's gymnasts. <laughs> Shelly Sack will be coming up next. We are now being congratulated on her performance. Had a superb day for the U.S. women's competition, particularly since Brandy Johnson is not here. Neither is Kim Zamesko, the two big names in the world of women's gymnastics as far as the United States is concerned. And, of course, Bella Caroli, and no meet is quite the same without Nine, the presence of the big bear, Bella Caroli. Bill got 9-8-5. Excellent performance by Bill Goss. And here comes Shelly Sack. Former member of the Olympic team and last fall's world championship team. Shelly's always dynamic on the floor to side. She adds personality along with some great tumbling. There's her full and double back. Stepped out of bounds there. Of course, that's a tenth of a point in deduction. Not too bad. Loves to perform. Well, that's why it's called artistic gymnastics. Shelly, as I mentioned, a member of the 88 Olympic team, and she will tell you straight out she certainly wants to represent the United States in the 92 Olympics in Barcelona, and she says she's regained her motivation that, that she kind of lost after the 88 games. Big break there. Tough move. 
It's a two and a half twist to a punch front. One of the more difficult moves being done. Round off full twisting back handspring step out there and her last tumbling run. I think these gymnasts are a little bit tired. They had a qualifying competition yesterday. Four, they had to go through four routines for today. I think it's catching up with them here at the end. Not what I'm sure Shelly Stack expected from her floor exercise performance. There's her coach, Kevin Weakland, who is one of the assistants to Don Peters. And let's see what happens here. She does the round off, back handspring. She takes off. She's a little low. She's going to do two and a half twists and watch. She'll finish forward and punch a front flip. Ooh, she rolled her left ankle as she met the floor. And of course, when you're that low in that short rotation, there's very little you can do. And no support on both feet. As we wind down, let's take a look at the final. The all-around standings. Wendy Bruce with a superb performance throughout the afternoon. Elizabeth Crandall, second place for the United States. Schroeder of East Germany, moving up in Sandy Woolsey in fourth place. But a wonderful day for Wendy Bruce. And all in all, you would have to say, Kathy Rigby McCoy and Bart Connor, things look awfully good for the United States at this point. I, I think, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, there, there's some work to be done. There's some form to work on and some possibly some more difficulty to add to these routines, uh, confidence. But, but without the two top athletes uh, in this country, in this competition, and to, to be so ahead of the uh, East German team, they, they did a tremendous job, and that's a big confidence builder for the U.S. women. Plus, Kathy, this is a very important time for the U.S. team because there's some very significant upcoming international events where I expect the U.S. team will be winning some medals. Of course, the Goodwill Games, which is in Seattle this summer, and then next fall, we'll be carrying the World Championships from Indianapolis, only the second World Championships hosted in this country in the history of the event, and it'll be at a very exciting opportunity for the Americans to win some medals and uh, win some World Championship titles. Okay, great being with you, Bart and Kathy, better known as Peter Pan throughout the nation. Take a look at the final team standings. The United States with quite a victory over East Germany. I want to remind you, tomorrow on ABC Sports, we have a boxing doubleheader coming up at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Undefeated Andrew Maynard takes on Art Jimerson in a professional boxing special. Then a middleweight bout coming your way. Doug DeWitt will meet Nigel Benn on Schlitz Malt Liquor Professional Boxing. And next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, it's the first duel in the Chrysler Triple Crown Challenge, the Kentucky Derby. The Kentucky Derby coming up next Saturday, the Run for the Roses. We hope you've enjoyed being with us from Memphis, Tennessee. This is Frank Gifford saying so long for Kathy Rigby McCoy and Bart Connor. Have a pleasant evening. Good night.